The Great Lakes region is unique. Uh, our maritime system, as you know, is unique and evolved, separated from the rest of the, of the nation. It has its own uh, 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 features, both, both uh, uh, geographically, uh, from an engineering perspective, from the dynamics of the actual waterway, to uh, uh, even some of the maritime uh, terms and, uh, and so on. So this region has 120 million people in the 10 jurisdictions that surround it, the eight Great Lakes states, and the two Canadian provinces that border our, our waterway and that border the Great Lakes. 120 million people is three times the size of California. The shipping system moves a couple hundred million tons of cargo every year for, the, for energy production, coal, it's come uh, through this port, uh, iron ore for steel production, um, uh, and uh, um, agricultural products uh, for export and also for domestic consumption. The industry is uh, both environmentally sustainable. Uh, our industry, uh, compared to other modes of transportation, has fewer accidents, fewer fatalities. Uh, it emits fewer greenhouse gases. There's not enough money. On the U.S. side, there are 52 federally authorized harbors. 34 of those, <clears throat> 34 of those 52 this year require dredging. The budget this year provides for 11 of those 34 to get dredged. To properly dredge those 34 harbors would cost about $74 million. There's about $25 million in the budget. We actually have two ports that the Army Corps of Engineers tells us will not be navigable by the end of this year, and they are Waukegan, Illinois, and St. Joseph, Michigan. That we have the harbor maintenance tax. Uh, we are taxing everybody to, in fact, fund harbor dredging. Uh, the tax generates $1.3 billion a year in revenue to the federal government. We're only spending um, uh, about, about $800 million a year on dredging throughout the entire nation. So we're actually sitting on a bunch of that money. Now, it doesn't sit anywhere. It's being spent on other parts of government right now. And, and the flaw was when this tax was created in the mid-'80s, Congress should have been clever enough, and we in the maritime ind industry should have been aware enough to <coughs> make them... Connect, legally connect the inflow and the outflow. And we got together and we tried to find out where we could use the expertise of the port authorities and some of the vessel operators <coughs> and bring in a partnership with the uh, region's environmental groups and work together instead of throwing rocks at each other, work together as partners to try to uh, add value and uh, find a solution to this product. Prob decided to establish a test center where new ballast water treatment technologies could be tested and verified. Uh, this facility in Superior is one of three, there's only three in the entire United States. It is the only freshwater facility in the world and uh, uh, right now I'm told the EPA is over in Superior uh, doing validation testing to make sure uh, uh, it operates as it's been advertised to operate. Keep in mind that there's no pattern to follow. We were breaking new ground on this. Uh, there is no, there were no test facilities to copy. So uh, we were, we were uh, sort of cutting through new territory and uh, uh, it was a long process. But uh, we expect eventually that the Coast Guard will officially sanction this as one of the three sites in the United States that technology developers can go to and have their uh, products officially tested. If you look at uh, where people are putting their money right now, they're investing in the future of this industry. A lot of people ask me what the future holds for the Great Lakes maritime industry, and a lot of people, I think, unfortunately, uh, are a little bit pessimistic, and they should be. Uh, the two federal governments, the Canadian and the U.S. federal governments, are investing $400 million right now in modernizing and rehabilitating the St. Lawrence Seaway. They are anticipating that this shipping system is going to continue to serve the economy of the region for decades and decades to come. Uh, development in the last year or so is now the Canadian Laker fleet is getting rebuilt. Uh, the Canadian government made some changes in federal policy governing ship construction and almost immediately uh, the two largest Canadian Laker operators went out and committed $400 million to rebuilding uh, brand, brand new ships. <coughs> Watch where people are putting their money, they're putting their money into the future of the shipping industry.